Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 69. Nice. Go up. <laughs> Andrew Dejard. That's right, before his, he was number 10. Yep, he's the, right. the only player to ever wear number 16. Well, him and every other beer leaguer that right. thought he was funny. In any case, we'll be talking a little bit about the uh, week in review. Obviously, it was a horrid week, but we're going to start with the Carolina game, the best one of all of them there. So there's that, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Hurdle and Shimmick, their injuries. Uh, we'll break down some of the players' defensive lapses over the last this week in some of the games. Uh, we'll talk about our EASHL teams, uh, the week ahead. Uh, Sharks games and uh, our fantasy hockey leagues. Very good. You ready to start the show? Uh, no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Such a morazic. So, um, yeah, obviously we're referencing something that happened in the Carolina game there. So, actually, the week in review, we're just going to start off with the Carolina game, like we said. Um, <laughs> the because only game that they got a point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to that. Um, you <laughs> predicted. Oh, man, I think I predicted. <laughs> I'd be happy with six, but expected four, I mm-hmm. think. I remember what I said. I think you said you wanted six. I was All saying right. uh, four Four would be good. I'd be happy with four. Um, that I thought that it was going to be a rough trip, that uh, Tampa Bay game was going to be an exciting game, but not exciting for us. I was bang on on that one. Um, yeah, no, it was just going to be one of those trips where I just wasn't really sure that we were going to come out with enough points. And it's good to be optimistic, but I was just kind of being a little bit more realistic for the week that we just had. And um, even I was kind of leaning more towards like a two point, but I was trying to be... A little more optimistic, <laughs> aim for four, and uh, we end up getting just the one point, which is uh, not not a good week. Not a good week at all. I mean, the good thing is they're not sliding too far in the standings. This is true. The Pacific Division's is not great, so yep. all is not lost. Don't worry. <laughs> well, uh, that was a 3-2 overtime game, and I have to say that one was a, a phenomenal game to watch. If you're a fan of hockey and you just like watching the action, that was a very good game to watch. There's great action going back and forth. Um, some of the guilt, well, both of the goals really that went in uh, against the Sharks uh, can be traced back to the defense kind of not knowing where to be or being in the wrong spot. Um, that second goal where Marlo was all the way back in the crease trying to play goaltender, I tell my kids, uh, my 6 year kids, um, you know, you're not the goalie. Don't back all the way in. Get your stick on the puck before. Uh, let the goalie do his job. And Marlowe mm-hmm. was basically standing almost in the paint when that goal went in. So um, just kind of one of those games where, you know, again, it comes down to those defensive breakdowns. But all in all, it was a very exciting game. They were competitive. Uh, it was uh, 2-2 for a good long while. And then the uh, overtime went through. Lots of action back and forth. Again, a very exciting game. Unfortunately, it goes down to the shootout, which, of course, Aaron's oh, favorite part of the game is the shootout. So dumb. Don't forget, though, <laughs> six months ago, roughly, these yeah. two teams were possibly going to face each other in the finals. They True. were the last. They went to the Western Conference and Eastern Conference finals. Uh, so they're very good teams. I was actually hoping that that was going to be the final because I was expecting games just like this, mm-hmm. back and forth, a lot of speed, a lot of skill, uh, just a lot of a lot of action. And I think last year, all the analytics people, their heads would have exploded because they're, <laughs> like they were the two top coursey right. teams. So it, it would have been interesting and a, a very exciting finals to watch. I don't think the NHL would have liked it because there's two small markets playing each right. other. <laughs> but. Um, Regardless, uh, I was excited, and yeah. it, this game definitely didn't disappoint. No, not at all. And actually, um, it, it, Logan Couture scored a goal in this game, and it was the only uh, team on the road that he hasn't scored against. Oh, so right. the, yeah. basically hadn't put one in that arena, right? Yeah. And it was funny. When you watch the replay of that, and I you know, suggest that you go do that, but um, when you watch the replay, you see Eric Carlson jumping up and down for joy like crazy, mm-hmm. jumping up and down. And Logan Couture has got this humongous smile. He, like, he's laughing. And we're, we're used to seeing guys smile when they score, unless it's Evander Kane. Right. Uh, but not like this. This was different, right? And then you kind of realize why. And you understand that, okay, he got his first goal in this arena. So, okay, it's, it's kind of special. But why is Eric Carlson jumping up and down like crazy? And it's because Logan told Eric Carlson before the game, hey, look for me. I haven't scored in this arena yet. Yeah. <laughs> so when the pass goes to Eric and he's he's got the puck, first of all, 
amazing poison patience with oh, the puck. Yeah. Just phenomenal poison patience with the puck. And he's down low. He's not up on the point. He's down on that like left winger spot, right? And he's just playing with the puck. He's just kind of got no one no, he's in the slave and one of the better defensemen in the NHL. And he's kind of backing him off just a little bit because it's Eric Carlson with the puck. I don't really know what this guy's gonna do. And he's just got dirty dangles, boys. He does. He dirty <laughs> tangles, boys. Uh, so then he just finds this really nice pass, just fires it right across to Logan, and frankly the shot I don't even think the shot should have gone in, uh, but hey, it's it, it counts, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he's he's got a goal against every single team and every single bar now. So you know, good on Logan for that. Is it every? I thought he was still short a couple, and this was one mm-hmm. of them. I think this was the one that he didn't have. Is what they were saying. At least uh, that's my what I gathered from from what they were saying on TV. So, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's not the case. And I misunderstood it. In which case, forget everything I just or said. Maybe I misheard it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know. Uh, so good on on Logan for that one. And, and again, really awesome to see. Really great poison patience from from Eric Carlson. The type of things that we're looking for him um, to to show us on the ice. And I do think he's that player. He's that guy that we're we're expecting to yeah. see. Now he doesn't get. He's not very flashy on the goals, right? Like you don't see him score a lot of goals, but. You know, a lot of times he's setting up these plays. He's getting these assists for for these guys who are bearing the puck, and it's because he makes this really beautiful play. And so, um, you know, again, the stats show one thing, but if you just watch the play of Eric Carlson, you see how he controls the play, how he controls the puck, and how dangerous he is out there, and how much respect the other teams give him when he's got the puck. That's why you're paying him the amount that you're paying him. Right. Yeah. Yep. Want to talk about the punch heard around the world? I thought we already did. We opened the show with yeah. it. All right, let's, so, let's go ahead. Fire so, away. So, <laughs> for those that didn't see it, uh, Peter Mrazek uh, took a little exception to Joe Thornton. And actually, you saw it in the highlights, right? There I was did. a There was a moment where Joe was in front of Mrazek uh, before this incident. Yeah. And Mrazek gave him a... He hit his ankle kind of, right? Yeah, he, gave him a little uh, swing with the stick into Joe's... Uh, the like, back of his get skin. Get out of here. Yeah, get, get out of kind of give him a little yeah. get out of my way kind so of thing. So that might have been the start of it mm. a little bit. And then, so uh, so after the play, Jumbo... I guess he was in his face kind of... Or he, he he put his stick on... Yeah. He, uh, Mrazek had, <laughs> had the puck in his glove. I think he covered it up. And right. uh, Jumbo got a stick in there and, and poked him. So Mrazek took se- exception to it and... Uh, at this point, Joe kind of like, was behind the net, and uh, Mrazek swung and missed. Uh, looked like he hit him at first, but he missed. Yeah. I don't think he got him. Uh, it was a dirty, dirty slash. It was pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Right in front of the refs, and they were going to call it. And then Joe got in his face, and Mrazek didn't step down, so Joe threw a punch and hit him kind of like, hit the mask, not really landed it. It was, I don't, I'd say it's a jab. It wasn't really a punch. It was a jab. Like, get out of here. Okay, so, and I've got a lot of people on, like, Twitter telling me, no, he was like, if you look at it, like, he kind of takes a little bit of a hop step to kind of get that Superman punch thing going. But my whole thing on this is, dude, you take 100-mile slap shots off the mask. Don't tell me a 40-year-old, like, kind of giving you a little rabbit punch (laughs) with your mask on. Right. With a glove on is really yeah the way that this guy went down like he flopped like a fish he did he made name uh neymar blush (laughs) (laughs) it's just it was bad yeah bad um and he didn't go he didn't he wasn't hurt first of all mrazik didn't go through the protocol the concussion concussion protocol so he was fine i think they even mentioned it after i think is either logan or the coach or somebody said it afterwards right like well he didn't go through the protocol so i'm sure he's fine yeah um, but here we'll take a, we'll put this tweet up here. Uh, this is from uh, one of the this is the athletic writer uh, f- that covers the Hurricanes. Mm-hmm. She took a picture. Uh, they had practice. They had practice the next day. Carolina did, and they had a little fun at practice by putting the little what do you call it the chalk mark of yeah. a dead person on the <laughs> ice. They drew it on the ice uh, for those on the podcast and have no idea what I'm talking about. They they basically like trace like uh, the goalies. The outline of him, like a like a body on the ground, right? And then yeah. they put his number on there and stuff. So uh, they were obviously having fun with yeah. it. Uh, so they knew he was he was fine, but it was just part of the game, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, that was probably the funnest thing that happened this week. <laughs> yeah, no, it was that was that was awesome. Right. So uh, and, and you know a lot of people got upset with it. Again, I I happen to see in, in the replays, and I wish I could give you a timestamp, but I don't remember what it was at this point <laughs> in time. But um, you, what you see is you see. You know, Joe is kind of standing in front of the net. This isn't the incident. This is before the incident. Joe's standing in front of the net, kind of blocking him, and he can't see, and he's kind of looking around, and then all of a sudden you see him kind of give this little 
jab with his his stick at the back of Joe's skate, and I wonder if that's really what set everything off. Probably because uh, Joe's got you know. First of all, Joe, two reconstructed knees. Don't go after my legs. Yeah, right. I don't care if it's ankles or whatever. Don't go after my legs. So you've got Morazic <laughs> making that little swipe in the first place. All right, cool. We're, we're we're good now. But then Joe comes by, and I don't think the whistle blew. So you play till the whistle. So that's what he did. Because if, if the puck is loose and he hits it and he goes right. through his legs, it's a goal. I mean, that's a goal. So, you know, again, Morazic takes another swipe at him. And Joe's like, you know what? That's the second time. You better back off, little man. And the dude comes <laughs> up to him and he's just like, nope. Okay. Suck a punch. Whatever. You know? So, hey, it is what it is. Don't step up to Joe Thornton unless you're ready to get clocked. That's, that's the... I like Angry that's Joe. That's the motto. <laughs> I think Angry, angry Joe is the, is the best. Is the best, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to agree with on that one. Now, uh, we're talking about the Carolina game for an extended period of time because all the other games this week <laughs> sucked. Um, the, the Sharks were just... Horrible, horrible, horrible in their own zone. Now, again, people are going to come after me for, for saying that it's the defense and not so much the goaltending. I'll say this. There were several goals that I saw that were absolutely no other fault but the goaltender. There was a goal against Martin Jones where he was out, ready for the shot, and the shot goes over his shoulder. It's a beautiful snipe, but you know what? There's no one in between Jones and the shooter, and Jones is set. He's not sliding. He's set. So Just got okay. beat. Yeah, you just got beat. And sometimes goalies just get beat. That's the nature of the position. Right. Sometimes you have a goal, a goal that was scorer the who is... Stamkos goal, right? I was going to say, sometimes you have a Sorry. goal scorer who is a sniper like Steven Stamkos, who happened to be the shooter in that case. And then you have another one with, like, Dell. Dell made a bad pass, but you know what? No one was helping out in front of the net. They made a pass from behind the net to the slot, across the slot, <laughs> and then shot it in. It's like, <laughs> where's the defense, right? Yeah. Um, and then even when he didn't goof up, there was one where... I think this is the one where there was like 35 seconds left or whatever. Yeah. And Dell comes and, and he, he squares up to the shooter and he just gets beat. Sometimes you just get beat. Now, again, I'm not apologizing for that. That's absolutely Dell's fault. The other one, absolutely Jones' fault. But a lot of these other ones that we were seeing, they're just bad defensive breakdowns. They're just soft in their own zone. And in fact, I'm going to play a clip for you right now. This is Pete DeBoer. I'm not even going to tell you which game it's after because it applies to every game, yeah. even the Carolina game. So you can guess which game uh, he was talking about, but this is Pete DeBoer having a little bit to say about the way that uh, his team is playing defensively. Uh, well, we've got to be better. I mean, you know, that's the best team in the league or one of the top two teams in the league, and you've got to bring your best game to beat them. I thought I liked our start. Um, we made two or three uh, defensive uh, coverage mistakes, and. Next thing you know, you're down 3-1. That's that's what a, a real good team does to you. So that was a disappointing part. I uh, thought we pushed back and played more of our game in the third period, but uh, too little, too late. I thought our uh, commitment to defend in our own zone was poor tonight. So, you know, it wasn't, you know, the other night in Phoenix, we were turning pucks over and giving them breakaways. I, I don't think it was that type of game. I just thought we were soft in our coverages and you know a uh, different way to give up opportunities but same result so there you have it again Pete DeBoer using that word soft mm -hmm. and uh, they take, if they take exception to it they're certainly not taking it to heart because we're hearing that word again so you know again they're, they're not like you said there's no commitment mm -hmm. to playing well defensively in their own zone in fact our next little segment here is going to be kind of dedicated to that. We've skipped over the week in review so that we could have the defense, the breakdown, defensive breakdown, <laughs> the breakdown of the defensive breakdowns, the breakdown, of the defensive breakdowns, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so we're going to start off in uh, the first. Well, this is brought to you by oh, right. La Villa. <laughs> La Villa's delicatessen in uh, downtown Willow Glen. Yeah, so they have a nice little shop there. Lots of great uh, sports memorabilia. They've got the great Italian food. They've got a whole little deli set up. Again, the Chris combo is phenomenal. The meatball sandwiches, the ravioli, anything and everything you could want out mm -hmm. of an Italian delicatessen, they got it. It's if phenomenal. you follow them on Instagram or Facebook, they always post the daily specials on there. Ooh, as there you well. go. So you can go check them out. Very good. La Villa, we feed the league. Yeah. So we're gonna jump right in here. So uh, first game we're gonna talk about is the first game of, first game. of the the week, which was Washington. Yep. Uh, this is a terrible goal to give up by the Sharks. Um, it's they basically left Verana out to uh, in front of Jones. Jones was left out to dry. So if you look at this picture here, um, 
you see Shimmick and Burns are on the bottom left of the screen. There's two forwards there. They're covering their portion or their, what they should be doing. Even though it looks like they're way out of... Burns looks like he's completely out of space, but he's actually covering his guy and doing his job. What you see at the top is Hurdle. Now, the centerman is usually the, the third defensive guy that's down low because there's three forwards on the other team. Two defensemen can't cover three forwards. So the center is usually responsible for that. The wingers are supposed to be covering the defenders of the other team uh, at the point. So if you look at this picture, Hurdle's kind of in no man's land. He's kind of skating towards the other defender, almost like he's a winger covering. It's like he forgot he was the center or yeah. something. And, uh, and Verona is wide open down low. So Carlson, being John Carlson, who's probably going to win the, <laughs> the Norris Trophy this year, uh, sees him, spots him, gets him the puck, and Verona finishes it off. So this goal made it, I think it was 4-1 uh, to one at that point. Uh, that kind of put the game out of hand, but um, just a terrible defensive breakdown. And now I'm going to I'm going to preface this. We 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 picked three things <laughs> for three different games to break down. All of them have hurdle and burns on them, <laughs> which and we weren't trying to pick on them, not at all. This is going to tie into something else later that we're going to talk about after we break down these, the breakdowns. But yeah, we, we, we figured this out after we had yeah. everything. We're like writing it on the board and going, wait, we just put Hurdle and Burns. Wait, you said Hurdle and Burns for the last one. Yeah, right. but it's for this one too. And, oh, and the other one? Yeah, and the other one too. <laughs> right, but Burns being in all yeah. three of them, two of the three were not his fault. Right. Like you're going to see he's actually doing his job and playing defense well. Um, so that's this is the first one. Yeah. So the second one. Well, actually, I'm going to say a little Go bit ahead. about the first one before we jump to the second one. Is that you know whether Hurdle should be down in front of the net or down in the corner, that's a communications issue with with him and his defenseman. So either Burns would have or Shemek in that case would have need to pull across and guard the front of the net while Hurdle goes into the boards with the other defenseman, so that you've got a defenseman actually in front of the net. Or that that needs to be recognized that both the defensemen are in the corner. Somebody needs to be covering the front of the net. But you can't have three guys pretending they're wingers covering two guys on the point when the puck's down low. That just doesn't that doesn't compute. So um, yeah, kind of a, a breakdown there again. What Pete DeBoer was saying that commitment to playing defense. It, it might not just be like oh we don't want to play D. It's more like we just weren't having our head on a swivel. Something you hear Drew Mendes say all the time when he was with the Sharks, right? <laughs> you can hear his voice. Saying, Absolutely, yeah. 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 No, get your head on a swivel. And that's just exactly what, what the problem is in that scenario was that somebody wasn't looking back to realize that there's nobody covering the front of the net and Verona happened to be right there. So again, I have a hard time faulting the goaltender on this one because you're essentially giving a guy the puck who's not a bad goal scorer at all. Mm -hmm. um, you're giving him the puck right in the slot. I mean, he's well, probably he's, in the paint. He's so. like an elite goal scorer. That's what I he's mean. He's on his way, yeah. That's what he's I'm gonna saying. He's going to bury that. So it's, yeah, it, that you need to recognize when those guys are on the ice and when you're not even within 15 feet of them. Um, so yeah, again, just one of the, the, the defensive breakdowns, the many defensive mm -hmm. breakdowns that we had, uh, first of all, that we'll be talking about, but also that we saw throughout the week. I mean, obviously, they gave up so many goals this week. <laughs> there were There's lots, lots of examples. From, yeah. That is true. So the next example, actually, is from that Carolina game. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and put uh, the first image up on the screen here. And the uh, first image here, you can see that Burns has already gotten his pocket picked. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he, he basically, I think it was Fogel, uh, grabs the, the puck away from Burns, and everybody's starting to go towards the corner there. You can see, I think that's, um, I think that's Couture, uh, number 38 or 39. I can't really tell if that's an 8 or a 9. But there's another Sharks player that's going in the corner with him. I believe that's actually Ferraro. So um, then you've got Hurdle. You can see him. Hurdle's in front of the net there. And he looks like he's in fairly decent defensive position in case anything happens to go through the middle there. Um, but he's also kind of staring at the puck. And the next image that we see, um, you've got Hurdle is... You know, down lower in the corner, he's trying to outnumber, and I get that. And you've got Marlowe on the boards, but there's nobody in the middle of it anymore. So that slot area is wide open. If that puck gets squirted out over there, it's game over, right? Yeah, and you so, can count how many sharks are in that picture, yeah. right in the bottom corner. There's there's four sharks within the picture. Now I'm assuming that there's a defenseman up at the corner there, and that's where Marlowe is. Um, you know, he, he's guarding the wall essentially right. for that that play to go up the wall, take away that pass. But there's nobody paying attention to that slot area. And the next image that we see is Hurl stretch himself out. This is after the pass has gone into the middle there, and I think it's Sveshnikov, and he's just, he's yeah. got it all by himself, and he's really in tight, and Hurdle's stretching. He's barely got a stick out in, in the way there, 
there. So um, just no no good chance there for the goaltender. Um, not a good chance for him to make that save. You know, could he make that save? Sure, absolutely could have. But, you know, again, the Sharks are not helping out their goaltender defensively. Uh, and, and this is just another example of that. And then, of course, the last example being the next game against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, again, a lot of choices. Several. In this game. <laughs> uh, however, the one that we're going to start with is um, it was a, a breakdown. I forgot which goal it says. I should have marked these down. But um, uh, someone's taking the puck on the left side, uh, left of Jones, and breaking in. And you can see... Burns is actually playing this perfectly. He has his guy tied up completely. Uh, so he pretty much has him covered. There's no chance he's going to be able to get a, a stick on the puck. Um, but what you see trailing and behind Burns coming in is the centerman, Hurdle, mm -hmm. covering. and he's. But if you watch, Hurdle is watching the puck the whole time, not keeping his head on a swivel, as Drew right. would say. So the next image goes, and you're seeing the guy. He's breaking in towards the goal. Hurdle's still watching the puck. The other guy's wide open on the back post. Burns is now has his stick on the shooter, which is good. He took out the the one pass, and right. he's getting his stick on the. The guy was able to slide it over. Uh, it's Cirelli again, or Cirelli, Cirelli. Oh, yeah. uh, and this last image here is Hurdle just completely blown coverage. Uh, the stick in the puck is actually in the very right side of the of the screen. Yeah. Jones is is dead to rights right there. He's completely just out of position. Not his fault. Right. Just the the puck went across. And the guy, uh, he doesn't even tap it, and he buries it basically on an empty net. Yeah. Um, so Hurdle again, blown coverage. Yeah. It, this is it's not good. Hurdle needs to be the best player on the Sharks. I think he is the best player. Curse was on last week, and he talked about this how uh, last year Hurdle was his vote for MVP yeah. over Burns. I think was mm -hmm. the one that got it. Mm -hmm. um, and and. It's true. Hurdle Hurdle had a good postseason. Couture's was just amazing because he scored so many goals. So people forget that Hurdle had an amazing yeah. year last year. Um, he needs to be better. However, he's hurt. Yeah, and I think that's part of why we the, the last two that we talked about just there. We talked about Hurdle with his stick stretched out, and even that last image there, you can see him. He's kind of standing up tall, but he's he's reaching with the stick. Um, and in the Carolina one again, he was reaching like really far with the stick. To me, it's, it's almost like it's almost like taking a tripping penalty or a hooking penalty because you've already been beat. In this case, right. he's stretched out so far. He's like, oh, I just got to get my stick out there because he's not able to get there. He's been beat defensively. And part of the reason that he's been beat defensively may be because he has been injured. And he's playing with it. Yeah, and something's going on. It's, it's mostly his legs. Yeah. It's a lower body injury or whatever. Yeah. But it, it shows like... It's showing, unfortunately, yeah. that he's not 100%. So, and before we get to the other injury, I just want to kind of reiterate, again, it come, it all comes back to we need to play stronger defense in front of our goaltenders, regardless of which goaltender it is. You're hearing, you know, uh, Curtis Brown had an excellent breakdown, and I wish there was a way for me to show that, um, where he went through and he talked about three or four different uh, breakdowns as well. It's kind of where I got the inspiration for it was to go pick some of our own clips. But Curtis was saying, you know, take a look at this, take a look at that. And he had like four examples like this. It's not I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not just trying to apologize for goaltenders all day long, guys. Like there's there's a <laughs> defensive issue on this team. Now, we had a little sarcastic comment. Hey, how about that Bog Bugner, uh, you know, special defensive structure or whatever it was. And yes, system. Yeah. System. Yeah. OK. Hey, the guys still need to buy into that to to that system. Mm -hmm. Not that they don't trust it or whatever, but they just need to get into the flow of it. They need to communicate better. But again, I, I go back to it again where I talk about what we said last season. Logan Couture's quote from good defense comes good offense. When you get that puck back mm -hmm. in your own zone, you now have possession of that puck and you can work the puck up. When you don't have good defense, the other team runs around in your zone and you never get an opportunity to possess the puck anymore. Last season, we were one of the better Corsi teams, right. meaning we had really good puck possession and we were getting lots of shots on goal. Same thing with Carolina. Well, that's the thing that's killing us right now. And I, again, we could look at the course of numbers and maybe it would tell a different story, but when you're losing games seven to one, five to one, whatever the case may be, that to me speaks to there's just nobody in front of our goaltenders. I don't think our goaltenders are that bad. 
Yeah. To me, there's just there's just a breakdown. There's uh, there's too many things going wrong where guys aren't looking and pay attention, and they're not committing to playing good defensively in their zone. I think a lot of times we get down to an early deficit, and guys are trying to grip their sticks too tight and make things happen, and that's not the way to go about it. Because when you're going out and you're trying super hard to create offense, you're leaving holes in your defense. And what they need to do is just focus on defense, get the puck back, let the offense take care of itself. They still have enough firepower to be a good offensive threat to any team that's out there in the league, mm-hmm. but they need to stop the bleeding. They need to cut the amount of seven goal losses, five goal <laughs> losses. They need to cut down on that. You're not gonna win a game You're trying to score eight goals. It's not gonna happen. Stop the bleeding, play your defense first, let the offense come from that. Now, I feel like those scores are a little bit misleading. Sure. Because they did, they, it's not like they got completely outplayed in the game. They had their chances, they looked good, they looked sharp. It's just like the wheels fell off at, yeah. at the end of the game. Especially the Tampa Bay game, what was it, 3 nothing going into the third, I think? Mm-hmm. Or even going into the second? Like, it it didn't seem like it was that bad because the Sharks looked decent. They had their chances. Uh, they just couldn't bury them. I mean, they, they had... Was it Thornton passed it across to LeBanc on this one? I think, and and Vasilevsky got his pad on yeah. it. But I mean, that that probably should have been a goal. I think Sorensen had a chance similar, should have been a goal, mm-hmm. just couldn't put it away. So, I, it's not to me. It wasn't like I don't want to say they weren't getting outplayed because they were at times, but they're just making too many mistakes. Yeah, too many mistakes that other teams that are very elite, such as Tampa Bay and Washington, are gonna bury. Mm-hmm. So I, it's fixable things. I think it's very fixable. I think I think we haven't seen the Sharks put together a complete game yet still. Maybe one or two this season. Yeah. But they haven't played a full 60 minutes of their potential best hockey, which makes me hopeful yeah. that it's it's going to happen. It's going to come, they're going to come out of it. And that's and we've talked about that too is that we say you know what we've seen from the Sharks is not is not Sharks hockey, right? It's below that. So that's kind of the hopeful part of it is that you know that this team can be better. You know that they can play better. And you use the word fixable. Absolutely, this is fixable, right? We saw November. Guys, did we forget the whole month of November? I mean, we were on a four-game losing skid, but my goodness, how good were they in the month of November? Mm -hmm. So is it fixable? Yeah, we just got to go back to what we were doing in November. Now, let's look at that two or fewer stat one more time. I don't remember how many games it was, right? 64? Sure, 46, I think. Doesn't matter. There's a ridiculous (laughs) amount of games that you win when you let the opposition score two or fewer. Do you think you let the opposition score two or fewer by scoring more goals? Or do you let them score two or fewer by playing good defensively? That stat should speak volumes to anybody who who has any question about whether or not the Sharks are playing well defensively, Mm -hmm. right? If you can keep them to two goals or less, the offense is probably gonna take care of itself as shown by the ridiculous amount of wins that you have when you keep them to two or fewer. You're probably gonna score three goals. If you can keep them to, to, to if you can play good defense and stop them to score from scoring more than two goals, your offense will take care of itself. That's what that stat says. So again, defense first, let the offense take care of itself. That solves more of the problems than I think most people think that the Sharks have right now. Right. So, anyway. All right, going back to Hurdle's injury. Yes. Hurdle and Shimmick are the two guys that are, they're playing through it. Well, Shimmick is out now. Yeah. He's going to be out for two weeks, uh, getting some minor, uh, not surgery is not the right word, a minor procedure. My guess is it's uh, orthoscopic, so they just drill a tiny hole in your knee, go in there with a, and they scope it, and they're probably cleaning it out. There's probably some, I mean, this is speculation. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing it's probably some scar tissue that built up. It's not feeling right. They're just going to go in and clean it out a little bit more. Sounds familiar, right? Right. Joe had the same thing happen, I think, on his first knee Mm -hmm. uh, or his first blown knee uh, and when he came back. So um, I think Shimmick will be fine. He's going to take two weeks off and and he'll hit the IR. So Mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot more heed, I think, in the lineup. Uh, I mean, we saw him earlier today against the Florida Panthers, but... um, it's unfortunate, but Shimmick was not right. He wasn't. He wasn't terrible, but he was getting he, his legs weren't there. Mm-hmm. You could tell. So, and I think I'd mentioned this all throughout the summer, like when he was expected back, because people were hoping for him to come back. It's like you just you don't build up that muscle because he didn't. He wasn't able to train like he normally yeah. does in the off season. So the muscle buildup when you go through a knee injury like that, that's what you lose the most is your muscle mass, and it's hard to get it back. 
it's a lot easier. You lose it quicker than you than you can build it. Yeah. So he needed to get that back. He needed to get his legs and speed and everything going, and that's going to help him get to his game. Hopefully this knee procedure uh, works. I don't know if he was playing in a lot of pain. Yeah. Probably was. Yeah. Um, so that's going to help him out. Now, Hurdle, we're not really too sure what's wrong with Hurdle. Uh, there was, what was it, uh, a couple times he's gone down, I think, in the last week or two, kind of in pain. Uh, he's left a game. I think it was the Washington game he left early because it was already 5-1. to one. Yeah. So it was all precautionary before they went on the trip. Um, I don't know if it's an ankle or a knee or something, but something's not right. And all the stuff that we showed, and we weren't trying to pick on Hurdle right. or Burns or anyone. <laughs> we just happened to randomly choose these ones. We're like... Oh. There's a common theme here. Great, <laughs> people are gonna think that we're hating on them. Right, and and we're we're not obviously. Right. It just again, I was writing them on the board, and I said, "Well, you already said burns a hurdle. That was the other yeah. one." She said, "No, this one." I'm going, "Oh, great." Yeah, <laughs> three times over, <laughs> but it just happened that way. We weren't trying to cherry pick. But it. hurdles, hurdles, feet obviously are not there. That's why all these plays, he's reaching with a stick because right. he's out of position because he's just getting beat. Now the NHL speed is everything, and not just speed as in top speed quickness mm -hmm. is everything more than I think even top speed yeah, yeah. so his quickness his jump just isn't there and it's showing defensively offensively maybe a little bit because he's not scoring as much uh, and not burying his chances sure. or getting as many but um, defensively it's starting to really show and, and I don't know if it's I don't know what kind of injury he's dealing with that's the yeah, problem yeah. so I don't know if it's good for him to just sit out and get better and get healthy or if it's something he can actually work through and, and come back to yeah. be the hurdle that we know and love. Yeah, and I'm a proponent of if he's not 100% for anybody, really. If they're not 100%, please don't bring him back because the last thing you need to do is re-aggravate whatever it is that's, uh, you know, kept him out. I mean, look at Dalton Prout. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the first thing he does when he comes back from, you know, I think it was a concussion injury <laughs> yeah. is he goes and gets into a fight and gets another concussion. So, um, you know, I, I'm a bigger proponent of make sure that they are 100%, get them back, not just because, you know, I mean, basically for the player, right? We, we think of the player first because that's a human being. So uh, just make sure that they're 100% ready to rock. Um, a lot of times they'll tell you they're 100% and they're not. <laughs> we saw that last season with Eric Carlson, I think. Yep. So, um, you know, I, I, would, I would much rather see, you know, Shimmick and Hurdle stay out of the lineup. We've already seen Hurdle out of the lineup, and we've already seen, you know, Shimmick out of the lineup, obviously. Oh, he's out for two more weeks. No, I know, too, yeah. but... but if it's going to be three weeks, take three weeks, right. right? So let Tim Heed play, and if you sink or swim, you sink or swim, whatever. Um, but with Hurdle, you know, Goodrow stepped up into the 2C spot there. I'm, I don't even call it 2C because, again, Hurdle's kind of our best forward right, right now. But yeah. a Goodrow stepped into his position, and he performed admirably. And if you can do that, then... You know, let the guy let the guy have the opportunity to heal as much as he can. Now, some of the other injuries on the team again. I just mentioned Dalton Prout. Um, I don't really know anything in terms of timetable timetable on his return. It's a concussion. Um, you yeah. can't really. There is no timetable. Who knows, right? Yeah. Who knows? So, um, you know, it would be nice to see him get back because I would like to see you know some of that bigger, stronger defensive presence again. This is part of what the the Sharks need right now is a guy to shove people out mm -hmm. of the front of the net and to be responsible doing it. So if Dalton can step back in at some point and be able to provide that, I think he will be you know, a, a big boon, if right. you will, to the Sharks. Um, the other injury, Auntie Suomela, again, no real timetable on that one either. I know that they were, the last time I've seen them practice, they've both been out in the orange jerseys and after the practice. Was his concussion or neck? I can't remember because he went awkward in the boards. Yeah, I just remember him going awkwardly into the boards. I don't think I don't. I have a. Fe I could be wrong. Okay. I'll probably get fact checked on this, but I don't <laughs> think it was a concussion. I think okay. it was like more of a stiff neck or something. Or well, stinger. Whatever you know. it is, it's keeping him out of the lineup, which is unfortunate because it sounded like he sounded like he might His be having. His game a, was coming around. Yeah, a little bit of a, a reemergence. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of a reemergence for him that maybe didn't go so well. So, um, you know, there's. <laughs> Quite a few injuries on this team, and it, you may you you kind of wonder does does Doug Wilson have some decisions to make here, right? So um, you know we've we talked a little bit in the live about some of the things that may or may not be happening, and, and some one of the guys was saying you know does Doug have his ear to the to the phone, you know basically yeah always yeah. doesn't matter if they're zero and twenty five or twenty five and zero or whatever this point in the season, I guarantee you Doug is listening, right? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean he's he's obviously going to have. You know uh, his his ear to other GMs around the league. Um, now the question is going to be, you know, if you want to pull somebody in, who do you pull in? Who do you have to give up? Um, there's there's a whole lot of speculation going around. Yeah. But what do you think? I mean, are we still looking for that that winger depth? <sighs> I mean, yeah, but I 
The problem is uh, cap space. We mm -hmm. can't bring in a big name player without giving up a roster player. Right. Uh, most likely a big name one because we'd have to get rid of a lot of cap space. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really hard to say. I, I mean, we talked about this. I think with Curse too yeah. um, on Wednesday about it's probably going to be some kind of depth winger that's on the cheap mostly right. and not giving up anyone on the roster um, and maybe giving up some prospects. Who knows? So. I mean, the only top prospect that we really have is Merkley. Yeah. But now that he didn't make Team Canada's team, mm -hmm. everyone's kind of like, oh, that's, that's a big... snub. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully he takes that and puts a chip on his shoulder and wants to play better. Proves everybody wrong. Right. Would love to see that. But that's a whole other topic. Yeah. A whole other story. <laughs> a whole other episode. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Are we all done with some of the injury talk stuff then? Yeah. You got anything yeah. else you want? Okay, good. So let's go ahead and let jump into the week ahead so we've got three games this week the first one's on tuesday yep which apparently this episode's going to air on tuesday so today i yep. guess uh and we are playing in nashville which yeah. didn't go so well i think the first time we played them this year but that was yeah. very early in the season uh not to say the team's completely different now uh, it, this is weird because if i feel like they go on those road trips they're not doing so hot yeah they need to really get their road game going mm -hmm. Uh, Nashville's a good team, a very strong, deep team. Uh, the Sharks are going to have to really tighten up everything and limit their mistakes, yeah. basically. I feel like that's where they're getting hurt is more on making their own mistakes than yeah. the other team creating chances. If there's a game where the Sharks can learn from the mistakes from the past games and, and apply it, this will be that game, right? Because the the Preds do have a good, uh, a strong presence. They're a heavier team, right? Mm -hmm. They they. they they're going to get in front of your net. They're going to get in front of your goaltender. You need to be able to shove them out of the way. Another team that has strong defensive puck moving. Defense, that too. Right? Yeah. So you need to be on on the lookout for that stuff. So again, head on a swivel. Good strong defense. That's the thing that you're going to be looking for out of the Predators game, and that's one of the things I think that this time around, I think you will find that. Yeah. I think we've had enough examples for the Sharks and for their their you know video coach and for Coach DeBoer and for Bugner. I think they've had enough examples of how not to do it that <laughs> they'll hopefully get it right in this game against Nashville in Nashville. So um, always a tough building to play in, but I think the Sharks uh, will, will bounce back and rebound. Will they win this game? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I think they're going to put the better effort into playing good defensively this time around, though. So that's that's kind of my take on the Predator game. But the next game is going to be back at home, if right. I'm correct. It's on Thursday, mm -hmm. and we play against New York Rangers. The New York Rangers. It's an interesting game. The Rangers are a up-and-coming team. Uh, they're kind of in a rebuild, I guess, full-on rebuild right okay. now. I think... They, because they landed, uh, what's his name? Capo. Cac yeah. Cac Kakinen. Kakinen? Capo Kakinen? No, Capo Caco. Capo Caco. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? S finish? I I'm just going to make names up. They yeah. got Charlie Johnson. Anyway, <laughs> they they got a couple young young guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, Lungfist is kind of phasing out, and this the new goalie is Georgiev. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. We need Dan. But, yeah. <laughs> we need it, Rizanowski back. <laughs> they're, uh, they're an exciting team. They're young, and uh, they also got Panarin. Yeah. So they they landed Panarin in the off season. Um, they're they're not a pushover team. They're not yeah. like a full rebuild like a uh, slam dunk two. They're points, a young stud team. Yeah, up and coming. Yeah, they'll be good in I think in about another two seasons okay. they'll be up there. Um, but anyway, they're they'll be fun to watch. It'll be a fun game, and it's Thursday night, uh, so it'll probably be the black jerseys. The what do you call it? Stealth mode. Yeah, stealth mode. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I they should get a win though. Okay. The Sharks should get a win. Okay, it'll be nice to come home. It, I'm hoping that they go and and win in Nashville, so that they can feel good about their road trip getting one win, and you know end the road trip on a win. Like that would feel good. Okay, come home then feel good, and then play the Rangers and beat them on Thursday. Good, and then on Saturday they stay at home and they play against Vancouver. Yep, and Vancouver started off hot, and now they are falling down mm, so cooling off a bit there huh yep okay so one of the pretenders i believe i said there you go so sharks <laughs> should be able to get a win i feel like the sharks have had vancouver's number the last decade or so <laughs> <laughs> not that they've always beaten them but i feel like they've ever since like even when the sedines were on there yeah like they just they ever since i think vancouver beat the sharks in the playoffs, playoffs. which was about 10 years ago yeah. maybe 
ever since then, I feel like th- that was it. Like they peaked, and then yeah. they've been the Sharks have been dominating since. Okay, so I'm gonna say three for three. There should be wow. No, I'm just kidding. No, Not that it don't should be. That. That's what I want. <laughs> I'm gonna. I would be happy with four. Four points this week okay. out of the six. Don't backpedal. Nah, just, Come on, man. Yeah. Stick to your guns. I don't think they're going to get three straight wins. Okay. I think. I think uh, plus, it's you know, it's a long trip yeah. that they had. Semi long trip, I guess. I'm with you. I think they take the home games. And I think the Predators game is going to be closer. I think they're not going to allow seven goals uh, in the Predators game. I hope they don't allow seven yeah. goals in the Predators game. Uh, I think they keep it tighter, but I think um, it, it might just be a little too much after you know this this long road trip for them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of looking at four points this week as well. How about goalies? You think Dell gets a game in those three? Rangers. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. I think Jones gets to start again against Preds. Yeah. Because um, they put Dell in, didn't they? Uh, the, they pulled Jones both games, the yeah. Capitals game and the uh, Tampa Bay Tampa game. Tampa Bay. And then the back-to-back Tampa Bay Florida, yeah. they started Jones yeah. today. So he had he had a little bit extra rest on those uh, those games anyway. So I think he'll take that extra rest and go ahead and start in uh, in Nashville. Mm-hmm. I think when they come back, they'll probably go straight to Dell, and then after that, again back to Jones. Yeah. So because um, you know Vancouver, it's a again divisional game, so you don't want to give them points. Um, they they look like they might be getting a little cold, but again, it's a lot of hockey to be played. You just never know. They might heat right back up again. So. Uh, I think you take those two points as uh, you give yourself the best chance to take those two points against a, a divisional opponent. Mm-hmm. I think they go straight back to to Jones for that one. Nice. So that's me. In any case, done with the uh, week ahead. Let's go ahead and jump into the EASHL stuff. So, uh, do we have a screenshot for the Xbox? Uh, I hadn't got one. Okay, yet. we will we will get that and we will put that up right now hopefully and if not it's just me with my hands out like this and you can stare um so uh yeah no uh there's the xbox uh roster if if we have it if not again i'm just doing my hands uh and we'll go ahead and pull that one down uh ps4 uh we do have this one so i will throw that one up for you right there now uh again the top three folks it's uh me with um, th- this that guy Knight, yeah. I believe, and uh, Nick, who is uh, who's just awesome. These two guys, and then their buddy, that guy. Um, the the three of them are, are kind of like a little crew, and they just they rock it every time. They wreck shop. They absolutely wreck it every single time. Now again, the stats may be a little bit padded, you know, because like you said, threes. they're playing threes, and yeah. hey, I don't care, and I'll tell you why. I'm not. I don't care about the stats. I care about the bags, people. I care about the bags. So these guys are out there getting me some bags with the threes eliminator wins. Uh, every time they do that, I get you know one, two, three bags. And if we level up the uh, the uh, what do you call it, the Arena. club, then uh, well if they level the club to oh, next yeah. level, I get a bag for that too. So that's four bags, you know. So uh, they've been killing it. I really do appreciate you guys stepping in all the time. I do want to throw a little bit of kudos though to uh, some of the other guys that uh, yeah. you know they play with us a lot. Um, so like Aaron jumps in every once in a while, but I actually um, didn't play this week. But I'm gonna jump on a couple times this yeah, week. Yeah, I know Lundy's usually out yeah. there. Um, I haven't seen uh, Edward in, in a while there, yeah. but he's, he's usually there. The one more Mexican happens to be uh, my nephew, yeah. actually. So uh, Dante, thank you, buddy, for uh, stepping in. He's actually a pretty good center. He's taking yeah. over your, your tipping roles. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, and then uh, you know, again, the, the usual suspects like the SJ Shark and uh, Sharkinator Four Hundred Eight. Those guys have been uh, playing with us for. Uh, quite a while as well. So mm-hmm. again, uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, for you know jumping in and playing with us. We're having a great time, and um, there's still lots of not safe for work, uh, <laughs> not family friendly language that's going on. But since yeah. Aaron's the only one that streams to Twitch, and Aaron hasn't been playing very much lately, then you don't have to worry about uh, your kids accidentally stumbling upon that. <laughs> Responsible parents. From there, we'll jump straight into our little clip here. Now, I don't even know what the clip is. Because I know I've got a couple of them. I haven't chosen which one that I want yet. Uh, and nobody else is sending me their clips. So it's just me being awesome. Or me showing other people that I was playing with at the time being awesome. Right. We don't know. But here's that clip for you. From off the wall and onto a stick. Oh, and a great defensive play there. And that's picked off. Gets it out of his own end. And it's a much-needed kill as the penalty expires. Well, there are times you look for your power play at the very least to get... Scores! James, you might as well put both goalies in the other net there. That's four in a row for them. And just a reminder, if you want to be featured on our show here with your clip, please feel free to send that uh, our way. 
the fin factor fin factor <laughs> the fin factor the fin factor at gmail.com and uh, go ahead and send us if it's a link or if it's just the clip itself uh, however you can get that to us go ahead and we will go ahead and highlight you on the show so Perfect. you're going to jump into fantasy fantasy hockey we'll throw up the screenshot here of uh, league one i'm still in third place still chasing but i'm pretty close mm -hmm. uh, i had a decent week i think i won seven to one this week so still getting lots of points, uh, just still chasing. Well, nice. it'll be like this, I think, all season. The top, us top three, uh, and we'll jump over to league number two. And I'm still way at the top <laughs> in this league. I'm just, I, I like this team better. I like my goaltending better. Mm -hmm. I like everything about it. And in fact, this is the team I have: Crosby and uh, just three guys. It's Crosby on IR. Um, Mitch Marner just came back. He was on IR for a while, and now I have a third guy on or two because Marner's back okay um, but it, uh, there's only two IR spots so I had three guys on IR at once I'm like and none of them you can drop because it's Crosby and Marner like right. you're not going to drop any of them yeah. so it's like oh I got in a tough spot but I've somehow kept the lead so nice. I'm still up there well done thanks okay well <laughs> I guess that does it for uh, episode 69 then right yep. okay no flopping uh, by the way so uh, guys again thank you so much for tuning in uh, we just want to remind you uh, to check out our live shows because we have like really great conversations with the community and mm -hmm. we've heard a lot about you know how much you know we've built such a great community it's, it's you guys so if you like the community so much come and join the live shows as well because that's where everyone's chatting so uh, we sometimes get a good idea for the show, which would be great. Um, we've done that before. We didn't get it this week, but that's okay. Uh, so, yeah, definitely check out that live uh, and make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when we are doing that and you can pop in, uh, say what's up, ask us your questions, uh, get our comments, mm -hmm. and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Fire away. Anything else? Uh, we are going to extend our Cyber Monday Ooh. deal this week. Uh, we're going to hit up socials this week, but uh, just for you to know, Go to our website uh, if you want to support the show and get something out of it. We got shirts, we got hats, we got stickers, we got. I guess that's it. <laughs> uh, go get yourself a little something for Christmas and uh, and maybe for your friend if yeah. they're a fan of the show, and it'll help us support the show. And uh, we appreciate it. There you go. Okay, so once again, we appreciate you guys tuning in. So we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.